Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing the uh, contrarian betting breakdown for UFC 300. And again, this is part two of the three-part uh, uh, MMA video series from uh, from me through True DFS. And for those that missed it, we do break down the DFS part of it into two parts. One was just who the best plays are, which is what we did yesterday. And then tomorrow or later tonight, we're going to do. Actually, it probably wouldn't be late tonight. But tomorrow at some point in the morning, we're going to do a lineup construction video where we completely focus on kind of the nuances of building uh, portfolios of lineups specifically to win the the big, uh, I guess, $200,000 prize um, in this uh, for this uh, slate where we kind of go over some kind of interesting techniques that are, you know, you could transpose and use in other MMA cards and other sports, et cetera. Uh, but the MMA contrarian betting breakdown, again, for those of you that hear the first time, and people might be here the first time just because of UFC 300, it's really just unlike any of the other betting breakdowns you're going to see because we're really not trying to figure out who's, you know, what's bet. Uh, and you're like, what am I doing here? Okay. Um, but we're not also trying to figure out what's the most likely outcome. Uh, certainly not. What we're trying to do is just kind of gauge, you know, where, where the public is and where the psychology is and to identify which components of these fights are just completely overvalued. And just, again, the the, the intro that I give to everybody uh, each week, um, let's do it again for the people that are here for the first time. Um, whenever you're in any type of betting market with a VIG, there, there are two ways to approach it. One is you could, you can just presume that you're just better than the entire public. And when, even though you have a 40 cent VIG or whatever, that your ability to know what's going to happen is just better than the entire millions and millions of dollars of action going in. And yes, that, that is certainly one way to play betting markets. And when I say betting markets, I mean either UFC, basketball, stock market, you know, anything. Um, but uh, I think a more intelligent way, well, intelligent way, a, a, a sharper way to look at these things is that the lines are probably somewhat efficient when it comes to people actually analyzing these things. However, so much of what goes into the eventual lines is driven by groupthink and, and driven by kind of like betting momentum where people talk about these fights nonstop. And when one person that's respected makes kind of an opinion, everybody kind of jumps on it and everybody kind of gets talked into um, what's going to happen. And, and while it's not always just everybody going to be on one side, in MMA and UFC, it's particularly interesting because what what gets set up is kind of a binary outcome, meaning that the group think mentality will agree that either A wins this way or B wins that way. A and as a result, A's that way, A's this way and B's that way <laughs> um, become incredibly overbet. And in a weird you know, uh, reality, those, this and that's are probably the most likely outcomes, but that's not the point. The point is, is the way UFC Twitter, the Twitter sphere works and the betting markets work is that everybody just gets so confident in these A versus B outcomes. And uh, if this was a sport that was that easy, I would say, okay, where's your edge? But in a sport that just by its nature is so ripe with chaos that that to to go with the most likely outcome and and the the result that is most likely implied by what people are analyzing is just by its nature very it, it, it just is almost forced to be overvalued um and this is the way i look at all types of betting markets i look at the stock market this way which is where i made all my money <laughs> this is what this is where i i look at the at, at, at whatever i do with sports betting which i don't really do that much um i look at what Part of a line might be driven more by narrative than re than than data. What part of a of a of an outcome is just such an easy story to tell and end up fading that? Okay, presuming that that is going to be the overvalued piece. So when we do this breakdown, yes, I am going to be betting all these. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, and yes, I think it's kind of, would be kind of cool if you guys bet the same things. But if this is not the purpose of this, is not like to. It's kind of hard to say, but. It's not specifically what you're supposed to bet on this card. It's it's really supposed to be how you think about wagering in general 
and we're applying it to this particular car. Um, and I don't know if there's that big of a difference, but in my head, there is. Um, so let's go over the rules here. There are 13 fights, at least for now. And here are the rules. We are going to bet uh, every one unit, excuse me, we're going to bet one thing every single fight. And that is not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, um, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And that is not the best money management system in the world, but I don't care either. And for us, at least for me, one unit is going to remain at $180. And I know that's kind of anathema to, you know, to a sports betting content for people to actually say how much money they're betting instead of units. But I don't know, I, I just think it's kind of healthy for people uh, you know, to, to put an actual money value on the units. And I know that everybody's bankroll is different and, and it's used for comparisons and things like that. But I don't know. I just think if someone's going to put up their, you know, their, their opinions, they should, you know, it, I think it's cool to tell people exactly what you're betting. So, um, and then the third thing is that because we're going to be somewhat contrarian, uh, we like to have some fun with this, and we are going to make sure that that we're going to presume that the first X amount of fights or whatever the first 12 fights, we are going to lose. And so the last fight in the main event, we are going to try to get all our money back by making sure we bet something at least 13 to 1. Um, and uh, yeah, the other thing uh, before I get into it is the reason why these don't come out until late is because if you can figure this out, the longer the people have to stew over this stuff, the better it is for me, because that really gives me a, a real solid, you know, take on where the public is and what people are expecting to have. And you will, you know, professional betters will tell you that is clearly not the way to bet, right? Uh, the, the professional betters will tell you if you really want to have any kind of an edge, you'll get it early. And that betting all the way at the end is kind of like the worst way to bet. Maybe if your goal is to just be better, you know, but I'm not really trying to be better. I I'm trying to be someone who can analyze the psychology of where these lines are coming from and, and, and be contrarian about it. So I, my edge is from as much information as being processed as possible it's for this purpose. Anyway, as I said, if you're still here, uh, you know, listen, there, there are plenty of other betting breakdowns that, you know, you could go to. And you're probably going to get the same information on all of them because everybody's starting to, starting to agree on everything. Um, but hopefully with this video, you'll learn a little more about how to, I don't know, how to think about this stuff as well as, you know, what I'm going to be betting on and maybe you guys can sweat with me. Because uh, last last week, last week was a lot of fun. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to talk about last week, but uh, let's just get into it. Uh, all right. First fight, Devison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. All right. So... Um, one thing about this card before we get into it is that on the one hand, it's kind of tough to be contrarian because there's name value in all these guys, but we're going to get to some good spots. So it's his first fight. You know, you have Cody Garbrandt is minus 300 and, and excuse me, Davison Figueredo is minus 300. Cody Garbrandt is plus 245. And when you simply, when you go through and everybody's analyzing this fight, you know, you're hearing a couple of things. You're hearing about Cody Garbrandt's chin brokerage. That his chin is gone. Um, and, you know, uh, when it comes right down to it, what you're hearing is almost a pure consensus is that is that Figueredo is just the side. Cody Garbrandt, while he does have some name, he just it's just I don't want to say his chin's gone, but that's that's the narrative we're getting. And in a weird way. You know, if you go through like all the Twitter sphere, you're going to get probably about ninety percent of the people that are saying either pass or take figure figure eight. And I'm not even saying just who's going to win. I'm even saying given the minus three hundred to find a Cody Garbrandt take at plus two forty, even plus the two forty five, it's not too common. Okay, so we're going to try that. Uh, and again, this is not one of those fights where everybody's one hundred percent sure of how the fight's going to go. Because I've heard a lot of different things. I've heard that there was a figure eight of micro for takedowns. I heard could be a boring decision. I, I've heard everything. So there's no edge in that. So we're just going to take the Cardi Go Cody Garbrandt plus the 245. Now we're going to try to get these done now, but it's possible that we might have to wait until the um until uh we log off because uh DraftKings doesn't really like Zoom. All right, uh moving on. And and uh, 
I will say also that as far as my confidence level, I don't make I don't want to say my confidence level in the result, but my confidence level that at least we're being contrarian enough on this fight, that first one is very, very small. And that's one thing I am going to go over is like where I'm really, really sure that we're on the right side from a, of the psychology and one and which fights we're just forcing. But we are going to force them all because that's just what we do. All right. Next fight, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Um, now, the other thing, again, before we go on, I know you're oh, again. The other thing is that because there's one specific video for DFS, you're going to find that, you know, I might have completely different takes as far as betting as opposed to DFS. And there there is actually kind of a logic to that. It's not that I'm doing it on purpose. But typically, the, the fighters that have kind of cooler methods of victory that people want to root for are usually overvalued in like the betting markets, where, where in DFS, you know, you're going to want that. OK, so that's why sometimes you'll see me on different sides from DFS as far as betting goes. So like like this one. All right. So we have Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Um, so I am seeing probably equal uh, uh, equal exposure to both of these fighters in the betting markets. You're, you're, you're getting, you know, Bobby Green takes from the people that are just listening. He's just a better striker. Uh, he's fought the better competition. Jim Miller, while he's been doing better recently, I mean, he's, listen, he's been killing people. This level of competition has not been so great. And then yet you have Bobby Green coming off. It's a really just terrible, brutal knockout. And then you have Jim Miller, who's been in UFC 100, UFC 200, UFC 300, and everybody kind of wants to play him. So I was expecting to see a little more Jim Miller love in these in the betting streets, but you are getting a lot of kind of you know reasonable takes on Bobby Green. So as far as which side you can take, there's no real edge. But what we can talk about is the uh, is the method of victory. So apparently the the idea is that is that Jim Miller you know, has all the finishing upside in this fight, okay? Um, he, he, you know, he he's more likely to get the KO, more likely to get the, you know, takedowns, even submissions or whatever it is. Um, so if you are going to bet a prop, for example, you really can't bet Jim Miller inside the distance. I think that is probably the overvalued piece. And then I think the Bobby Green by decision is also kind of the overvalued piece because people are concerned. This is what people think are going to happen. Either Bobby Green keeps him at range, gets the, gets the decision or Jim Miller just gets the, uh, just gets the, uh, just gets the, uh, the finish. So what you can bet is either Bobby Green inside the distance or Jim Miller by decision. Now, I don't even know which one is the, is the, is the better, better price without even looking. So think about this without even looking. What do you think is the better price? Bobby Green inside or Jim Miller by decision? I honestly don't know, but whichever one that is, we're going to bet. So let's pull this up. Uh, Bobby Green uh, inside the distance is plus 240. And then Jim Miller by decision plus 500. So that's what we're going to do. Jim Miller plus 500 in, uh, by decision for 180. Okay. Moving on, we have Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. All right, uh, here's the first one. This is, you know, one of the easier, I don't know, one of the easier fights to 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 bet on from a contrarian perspective. You have Jessica Andrade, who, you know, all the money's come in on her. She was a pick'em, and she's been steamed up to minus 140 or so, and for good reason, you know, like, uh, you know, she has what they say is all the takedown upside. You know, Marina Rodriguez does not have the greatest takedown defense. And and Andrade, first of all, she's, you know, more aggressive. And second of all, all she has to do is kind of go for the wrestling, go for the takedowns, and she's going to have a big advantage here. So I think that you're getting you're getting just a, a whole ton of 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 love on the Andrade side. Um, so you can't bet any of this. The, so Marina Rodriguez is just the clear contrarian play. The only thing I, I want to think about is if there's, if I want to play something even funnier, you know, like I, I was going to say that what are people suggesting Marina Rodriguez's most likely outcome is when she wins? And then I would just go the other way. 
you know, like if people were, I thought people were saying, well, well it's going to be Rodriguez by decision or whatever, but I can't find anybody that's taking Rodriguez at all. So I can't really make that determination. So we're just going to take Rodriguez plus the 120, even though it's an atrocious matchup, even though she's probably going to get taken down. I just can't resist. All right, moving on, we have uh, Jalen Turner versus uh, Reynado Moicano. So this one analyzed pretty, pretty nicely by everybody, and everybody's pretty sure what's going to happen. So you have Jalen Turner, bigger, stronger, much better striker, just a KO machine, okay? Uh, and, and so he is going to try to knock make, uh, Moicano's block off. Where Moicano does have the edge, though, is in the takedowns um, and in the grappling. So if Moicano wins, probably going to come by a sub. So what can't you bet? Can't bet Jalen Turner inside. You can't bet Jalen Turner probably by knockout. And uh, weirdly, you cannot bet Moicano by sub. Okay. Um, just even though like it's got it's probably a decent price, it's just the most logical way that he wins. So it's just going to be naturally overvalued by the way people have been talking about it. So what you can try is basically either of these guys by decision. Okay. Or for that matter, you could just bet the fight to go to decision. Um, because I'm not seeing too much of that either. So it really depends on your on your risk tolerance. Um, since we have kind of a high one, let's <laughs> Let's see the different prices here. So you have Moicano by decision is plus 550. Jalen Turner by decision is plus 700. So we're going to take a shot. Okay, we'll, we'll take a shot at Jalen Turner by decision plus the 700. You know, there's another... Uh, uh narrative that's going into this week that I didn't really talk about. And I'll throw it out there to you. You know, you can do with it what you want. The real big news that came in in the last 24 hours is that Dana White has included a 300000 has made the bonuses for the fights $300,000. So if you get a fight of the night bonus or a performance bonus, it's 300000 so what that is obviously going to mean is that all of these fighters are going to be going for big finishes. So you know what that means for me. I am probably should be betting every fight to go to decision because everybody believes that everything's going to go by finish. The, the, all those lines are probably juiced up a little bit, and we're probably supposed to go every fight for, by decision. We're not doing exactly that, but... All else being equal, I think you are going to get some real kind of super sneaky value in pretty much every fight going to decision because of that $300,000 bonus. Anyways, um, moving on, we have Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopes. So this is, you know, this is a, a pretty common like recency bias spot here. You have Diego Lopes who literally three fights in a row has been everybody's hero. Okay. He, he was, he fought Evluev and, and as a big underdog, he gave him all he wanted. And then in the next two fights, you know, he, he, he was a very, very small favorite. If that he had a submission in like 10 seconds over Gavin Tucker. And then he got a KO in his next fight. And now he's fighting Sadiq Yusuf, who is just not as well loved. I mean, he's not as, as, as exciting of a fighter. And he just lost, and everybody just really wants to play Diego Lopes. So, so we're, we're definitely not doing it. Okay. The other thing, though, is the is is the method of victory. So I was expecting pretty much everybody to come in on Diego Lopes by submission. Just he's just an incredible submission guy. But I am seeing some people coming in by KO. All right. But what I'm not seeing any of is Lopes by decision. Because what they're saying is that if Sadiq Yusuf is smart, you know, he'll keep this at range. And if there is a finish, excuse me, and if it goes to decision, Yusuf is going to be, uh, is going to get the decision. So what you can bet here is one of, I guess, 
three things. You could just bet Yusuf for openers. The other thing you could do is bet Yusuf inside the distance, and that would be a lot of fun. You could pull that off. Um, or, or you could play Lopes by decision, which I don't know who's doing that. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these odds and see what we got here. We have Lopes, let's see, Lopes by decision plus 550. That is rather, you know, that is rather juicy. And we can always play Yusuf plus the one. Who is actually playing Yusuf minus plus 120? That's such an awful bet that we probably should do it. But I might, ah, boy, can I play Yusuf inside the distance? Let's see. Well, it wouldn't be by submission. It would be by KO. Yusuf by KO is plus 400. So let's think of another. What's better? Yusuf by KO, what's more likely, considering neither of them are going to be played? Yusuf by KO plus 400 or Lopes by decision plus 550? Well, I'll tell you, it's... um. Boy, oh boy. I'll tell you, if you do play Lopes by decision, you're going to be sweating a split decision thing because people are expecting Lopes to finish. So if he doesn't, it is going to be tough for him to get that decision. So you want to try this? You want to try Yusuf inside? I mean, it's so brutal. Ah, let's just play Yusuf plus the one. I'll turn to my man card later. Ah, see, now it's not going to let me bet anymore, but it's okay. Uh, we'll bet. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to bet these after the uh, after the fights. Uh, but we'll put them. We'll put them in for sure. Bet placement available. Fair enough. Okay. Um, let's get back to this. Uh, where is the UFC? UFC here and where were we? All right, uh, Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. So this fight might not happen. Uh, we've known this for a, for a month that this fight might not happen just because of the Kayla Harrison weight cut. Um, they they don't they're very suspicious that she'll make this weight. And I, apparently Holly Holm has said that if she, Kayla doesn't make weight, I'm not fighting. So. With any luck, we bet this fight and we get our money back when this fight gets canceled. But if not, let's let's talk about this. So Holly Holm does have a lot of a lot of uh, name value. OK, uh, so there is probably some natural money line lead towards her. And I have seen so I've seen more home by decision and home money line bets than I usually do for these women plus 340s. Most of them don't have most people don't have it in them to do it. Um so in a weird way, I don't really think that the Holly Holm side is what you're supposed to do here. I think what you're supposed to do is focus on a method of victory here. And, and the, the, the narrative with Kayla Harrison is that she's very aggressive. She's going to get on top and ground and pound. So unfortunately, you can't play her inside the distance either. So I think what we're going to do is once again, we'll go Kayla Harrison by decision at plus the ones win. Uh, it says bet placement unavailable, but we, we will we, we, we'll we'll remember. Okay, uh, actually we'll save it. We'll save it. All right, uh, next one: Calvin Qatar versus Aljermaine Sterling. Just about the easiest fight you can you can analyze. You have Aljermaine Sterling is just clear has the clear grappling edge, and he's going to. Take the take guitars back and either submit him or ride a new decision. And if he doesn't, if Qatar can keep it on the feet, you know, then maybe Qatar can can grind something out. Maybe he can get a KO or something like that. So what can't you bet? You can't bet Sterling by decision. You can't bet Sterling inside. Excuse me, you can't bet Sterling by sub. And you probably can't bet Qatar cater 
I guess, what, here's only plus one in 45? Who's actually doing this? All right, so here, here if, if you want to be contrarian, this is what you can do. You can play Cater plus the 145, or if you really have it in you, which I don't think I do, I mean, you could play Sterling by knockout. I mean, that's probably going to be plus 1,000 at least. Let's see what that looks like. Plus 900. Boy, this Sterling by submission is so freaking juicy. Everybody's playing this. There's no way this can there's just no way this can work. What does a what does a cater win look like? I mean, he's got to have to stuff the takedowns and just be that much better on the feet. Ah, let's try it. Sterling by KO plus nine hundred for one eighty. All right, moving on. Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. Just such a – this is just one of the easier ones. And I was going to say that I'm going to be the only person on this side, but there was a pretty sharp guy who uh, – I'll shout him out at, at the end of this, who's on the same bet as I'm going to be on in this one. And it's just it's just so, so chilled. It's just so lax. You have Yuri Prohaska, who's a complete madman. OK, very aggressive, you know, kill or be killed. Not the greatest striking defense in the world, but he's a freaking madman. Because Alexander Rakic, who is just completely technical, totally sound, you know, can be somewhat boring, can, can be somewhat low volume and and coming off a like knee surgery. Um, so the path for a Rakic win is clear. You know, he's going to keep it technical. Keep it, you know, keep it clean. Maybe get a takedown or two and grind out a decision. Or Yuri is going to, uh, you know, just knock his head off. So what can't you bet? You can't bet Yuri inside. And you can't bet Rockets by decision. So you're torn between whether to bet Rockets inside or Prohaska by decision. And first of all, the theme of this card, which we talked about earlier, makes this easy. And even when you look at the odds, it makes it easy. You have Rockets by, let's look at Rockets first. Rockets inside the distance is plus 200 for real. I'm going to get Yuri by decision at plus 650 on a card where everybody wants the 300,000, but not so easy to get the 300,000. So we're going to play Yuri by decision plus 650. I will shout out uh, Narco MMA. Uh, Narco MMA, Narco Pop MMA, who he did, he did a really, this, this was a really, really good session. They, they did a four, four men who are just really, really sharp. They all gave their takes. And again, most, mostly everybody agreed on everything, but he was the only one that came up with this one. And I'm down with it. Uh, Yuri by decision plus the 650 for 180. Um, and if you want the full breakdown of how that fight will work out that way, I, you can just go to his site. Uh, and, and, and look at him there because it's it's, just, it's a perfect way this can work. You know wh what do you do if you're if you if you have a big knee injury and you're kind of finding a madman? You're going to want to stay away from him. You know, and so that means that if you know the if you're going to try to stay away from him, then if we think it's going to decision, you just got to be the more aggressive guy and be Prohaska and and you, and you get the decision. Um, maybe it's not exactly that simple, but again, plus six fifty, we're gonna we're gonna find. It. Um. All right, uh, Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Um, all right, so you have Bo Nickel, who's you know been priced as the biggest favorite in in UFC history. It looks like uh, minus sixteen hundred, and Cody Brundage is plus nine hundred on the other side. Um. So th this is the unfortunate reality. The unfortunate reality is that is that. One thing that you really can't bet, it seems kind of strange, but you can't really bet Brundage round one. And that seems kind of really odd, right? Like, why would you even want to do that anyway? But, like, Brundage round one is, is like, plus, like, 40 to one or something like that, or 30 to one, something like that. But this is what everybody's betting. They're, everybody's just presuming that, that Brundage 
you know, if he does get it done, it's going to be in the first round. Um, so that's actually, I mean, I actually think there are more people betting Brundage. And listen, obviously, this is obviously the case. Like, there's more people playing the Brundage money line, I think, than the nickel money line. Because, I mean, who really wants to lay a minus 1,600? People would take the shot at the plus nine. Um, and I think people would take a shot at the Cody here. So in a weird way, I'm not I'm not too down with the Cody. The only way I would play the Cody, you guys really want to do this? If you play Cody by submission or worse, what if you play like Cody by decision? At 45 to 1 or 30. Like that's the way you play Cody. You don't play him by KO. Okay? You play him by submission. And I know how he can get it done. I know. I mean, you know, you, you have Bo Nickel go for the takedown, Cody Brungage get a guillotine and somehow serve up, you know, win. You know? 45 to 1. Does it happen one end of 45 times? I don't know. You tell me. But that's I think there's definitely value in that. And the Brundage by decision. I mean, I don't I don't know about that. I think that if you really want to play something fun, if you didn't want to play the Bo Nickel side, then you do something like this. You play Bo Nickel by decision. Again, it's it's very thematic, right? Because we're playing all these fighters by decision on a on a card where they're offering 300000 for first. Here's the thing, like Bo Nickel can't get a performance bonus. It doesn't even matter because everybody's expecting him to get around one one finish. So what is he gonna do? You know, there's just no way. Like you have all these like name fighter champions. If one of them wins a war with somebody else, like they're going to get the performance bonus. Bo Nickel, I don't, I don't think the three hundred thousand is even in the cards for him. Okay, um, so it's not like he's going to go extra hard for that three hundred thousand. He's not never going to get it. Okay, um, what does he got to do? So the, the Bo Nickel by decision, all that requires is that Brundage kind of is just he survives. And, and and what what if Brundage actually gets the takedown himself? What if, what if he rides him rides Nickel out the first round? What what happens then? I don't know. Uh, okay, so a couple of a couple of things. By the way, the people are betting, which are, again are just you know, everybody's trying to bet this fight. So you're not really getting a contrarian doing any of this. But people are going for the. For the for the for the for the TKO DQ. As a matter of fact, I mean, I thought that nickel by submission was going to be like minus four hundred, but weirdly, this is so funny. Like weirdly, this KO prop has been steamed because of the because one people are looking for something different to do, and two because. And two, because I guess people saw him get a KO in his last fight. Why don't we just are we can we be contrarian by being chalk? Like, can we, is this one of those cases where we could just play nickel by submission and take the one twenty five, and 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 fade all all of the of the geniuses that look for these for look for these other methods of victory? Like, I'll give you something else. Like, so okay, what what do people presume going into this fight card? That's Nickel's going to get takedown and win by submission in round one, right? And so people then started talking about all these other ways he can win just so they can bet him. What is a nickel by submission round one anyway? It's only plus 120, so we don't want that because what if it's not round one? So all of that, all that stuff about Brundage by decision, 40 to 1, you know what we're going to do at the end of the day? We're going to play no nickel by submission. Uh Again, I think back to like all, and listen, you guys are feel free to look at all the content out there. I don't think anybody's even actually playing this at the end of the day, the nickel by submission. It's the most obvious to me, but everybody seems to be on this KO thing or something sneaky like like round two, round three. Um, I think that, that the only the thing the only thing I would do differently, either either nickel by sub or nickel by decision. But I just think nickel by submission is just so. So easy. All right. Let's move on. 
Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. Um, all right. Pretty easy. You know, listen, everybody's seen these guys fight some, these guys fight a million times. So it didn't take long for people to figure out what was going to happen here. So Oliveira, what you know, like the best finisher like in the world, pretty much. Um, and he's surprised people as an underdog before. Other times, not so much. Um, when he was a big, when he's underdog to Makachev, he certainly looked like one, you know. Um, but his path to victory is certainly inside the distance. Um, so we can't bet. We just, we just can't. That's, so many people are doing this. There's just no way. Sarukian, you know, he's got all the wrestling. He's got all the top time. And he's going to probably, I would say probably, just kind of get him down to the ground and and probably just knock him out, you know. And this is what people are, are kind of presuming. It's either Oliveira inside or Armin may be late. All right, this is what I'm getting a lot of, like Armin like round two, Armin round three. Here's two things that I'm not seeing too much of. One is Armin by submission. And the other one is Armin by decision. Um, just because I don't think Sarukian's ever had a submission before. Um, so let's let's take a look at those odds, because I think those are the two things we can play. We certainly could play Oliveira by decision. I mean, that's certainly contrarian. I just don't see a world where that happens. So Sarukian by decision plus 300. Again, very, very thematic, right? Sarukian by submission plus 700. Hmm. Very interesting. Gets the takedown. And then, boy, oh boy. Can we, can we do this? Now, what you could also do, oh, my God. Sarukian by sub, like, specifically round two, plus 20 to one. I don't think he's going to get a sub in round one. I mean, Oliver is probably going to go after him. But if he does, I mean, do we want to not, do we want to miss out on the sub prop? This is one of those you're probably supposed to go Sarukian in round two by sub or Sarukian round three by sub. But he's really never had a sub though. But if he gets in there, he's just going to go for the freaking, he's just going to go for the, for the, for the ground and pound, isn't he? All right, we'll be wimpy. We'll just take him by decision. Sarukian by decision plus the 180. All right, we're now at the, the meat and potatoes. Well, every, this whole card is meat and potatoes. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Welcome to the, you know, the most popular underdog in the history of the United States, that being Max Holloway. Um, he's got all the volume. He looks bigger. Uh, he's more five-round experience. Um, and Gaethje can tend to gas as he gets around four and five. Why on earth is Gaethje favored? So there's no way we're playing Holloway. Just literally no shot. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the easy bet of the day. Because if Gaethje is going to win, it's going to be early. And once it gets to those championship rounds, that's where Holloway, his volume and his experience takes over. So... Being thematic, we're going to go Gaethje by decision, plus 300. Let's go. All right. We got two more. We have Zhang Wei Li versus Jean, uh, Yan Zhonan. Um, okay. This is, again, operate at your own risk, but this is Full-on consensus, I think. This is Zhang Wei Li has an incredible grappling edge. Okay? Just an incredible grappling edge. And styles make fights, and she's going to take her down and either submit her or ground and pound her. And that's really the only thing that could happen. So if those are the two only things that can happen, those are the two things we can't bet. Um... So what are we left with? We're left with 
Zhang Wei Li by decision. <laughs> See a theme here. Um, or, or just close our eyes and just play the underdog. Because I was expecting to see some uh, Yan Zhou now, and at least at four to one, but just not. No, I guess not. I guess like it's a hundred percent participation on Wiley. So let's take a look at the odds here. Uh, let's first of all look at the the the, the theme. Wang Li by decision is only plus two hundred. No thanks. We're 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 gonna do it. We're gonna close our eyes. Hello. Yeah, so we're going to do it. Uh, Zhao Yanang plus 370. We're really throwing money in the trash can, but we're going to do it anyway. So you want to review like these atrocious plays that we made? Um, again, some of them are in here already, some we forgot. But So we played Zhao Yanang with the terrible striking, uh, the terrible uh, uh uh, stylistic matchup, no shot. Justin Gaethje, you know, when we get to around four and five, that's Holloway season. So I don't know why we're doing this. Uh, we have Sarukian by decision. Um, all of all of all of Harris fights finish inside the distance. Why are we doing this? We just paid money. Bo Nickel, this is probably a little fishy, but oh my god, what is she over? Hello, what's up? Sorry, so we're just like repeat. We're going through all these again. Bo Nickel by submission is probably pretty weak, but we're doing it. Uh, Yuri by decision. Love this one plus six fifty. There's no chance to win. Sterling by KO. What a moron. Uh, Kayla Harrison by decision with all of her aggressiveness. Are you kidding me? Only plus one twenty, please. Uh, Cody Garbrandt against Figueredo with the, with the glass chin. I, I can't imagine that one. Uh, Jim Miller, Bobby Green. Jim Miller by decision? Well, he's the one with the finishing upset. Why are we doing that? I guess for the same reason we're playing Marina Rodriguez with her style of disadvantage over Jessica Andrade. And for the same reason that we're playing, oh, now we have the whole string of the inside of the decision, decision aiders. Uh, we have pure finisher Jalen Turner to win by decision. We have pure finisher, I think, Diego Lopes to win by decision. Is that what we ended up doing? Or do we play Sadiq by knockout? I think we played Lopes by decision. I don't even remember. Uh, Kayla Harrison, we just talked about, uh, Sterling, we talked about, so we got all these, all these losers here. So now we have to win 13 units in this main event. How on earth do we do that on a fight that's been analyzed to death? Well, let's see what's been analyzed. And unfortunately for this particular thing, we have to reverse engineer our wagering and start with the 13 to one shots. So let's start with how this fight's supposed to go. I mean, you got two guys that are just strikers, okay? Um, you have Pejea or Pereira or whatever, who, you know, he, he's somewhat hittable, I guess. He's gotten KO'd, but he's got that death touch as well. He has good leg kicks. Jamal Hill, he's coming off Achilles surgery, which is pretty brutal. And he's coming in on short notice. Huh. So you're getting both fighters. So you can't really get contrarian on either side. But what you can do, what you're going to be forced to do is, is pick a method of victory that's 13 to 1 to make this work. There are a couple of things you could do, like if you want. You know, again, this is not recommended. Okay. If you want to play either of these guys by submission, you could do that because no one's doing that. Everybody's just presuming this is going to be some striking battle. Um, so you can certainly do that. You can't play either of these guys just by decision because it's not going to be 13 to 1. The only other thing I can think of is that you just pick your favorite round. Okay. And for this particular fight, it's just going to have to be a later round because these other, these early round. KOs are just what people are expecting in this fight, and they're just not going to be that that juicy. So let's reverse engineer. Let's just go back and see if we could find a round for one of these guys to finish in, unless we feel like going like Jamal Hall by submission to plus 14-1. Ooh. 
14 to 1. Oh my. Um okay. Let's uh let's take a look. TKO. I guess all these are fine, right? Like if you're good enough to pick like exactly which of these rounds, then you just deserve it, I suppose. So Paheya round four plus 18 to one. Jamal Hill round four, 18 to one. I guess that's what we're supposed to do because at least these guys have actually done this. You know, we can't really play the submission prop here. So um, I honestly don't know which one to do. We're going to pick one of these guys by TKO in round four. You know what's going to have to be? It's going to have to be Hill because we've at least seen Paheya with the late round finish when he when he knocked out Izzy in the last round. So we haven't seen that out of Hill. And with the, the Achilles, with the leg kicks, it just becomes a little less likely that Hill's going to have enough power left to KO him. Boy, oh boy, I should really just play him by submission. I'll tell you what, this is what we're going to do. The problem is there was an inter interview with him where he said, no, that's what Jalen Turner said. People are thinking that Jamal Hill might be able to take him down. You know what? I'll tell you this. If, let's, let's create this narrative. If he is getting his legs kind of chopped a little bit and not feeling that power, I think it's probably going to be Hill's best path to victory is to try to go for some takedowns. So we're going to try it. We're going to try Jamal Hill by submission, plus 1,400. Ouch. Uh, and that's going to do it for uh, UFC 300 from a contrarian betting breakdown, from a contrarian perspective. Again, I hope that you learned a little more about how to think about these things than who to actually pick because – so you tail all these, you tail them at your own risk. And uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.